All right, we're going to give a little context to our video today. Um, a common request we're getting in our office at our firm is the request, can we take out uh, a, a wall between the kitchen and the living room? Uh, often this is a, is a smaller home where we have that, that uh, confined claustrophobic space. Uh, these are our homes that um, you know, front of house, back of house is somewhere between 22 and 30 feet uh, in depth. And we've got this center wall that's interrupting uh, that, that living room from kitchen. And it's just confined. And, it, you know, uh, post-World War II, we had millions of these made, 40s, 50s, 60s. Um, we're getting a lot of requests to see what, what folks can do with that space and modernize it. Um, so the request is, can we take the wall down? Is it load bearing? So that's the context of this video. If, if your home's two stories, uh, we're probably not going to talk about that today. If you have a complex, more modern structure, uh, this is probably not applicable. This is that small, um, smaller home, 40s, 50s, and 60s with that, with that, you know, that wall between the living room and the kitchen question. So a uh, little context there. Um, the other thing is, uh, with all of our um, information we're going to give today, it's general in nature. Uh, please consult your local engineer. Uh, every home is a little different, and certainly the home could have been modified without our knowledge. It could have other issues that we just don't see or know about. So call your local engineer. With that, let's move forward. We're going to use our, our box again. We're going to. Um, be accused of not thinking outside the box, but here we go. Um, and there's a couple things about determining this uh, for, for reference. We're going to call this that wall. You come in the front of the home, you're right in the living room, there's some kind of wall between uh, the living room and kitchen, um, and that's what we're going to talk about. Can you take this out? Is it load bearing? Well, we know you can take it out in this type of home. But how much work is involved in removing it? Later in this video, you're going to see an actual installation, which is really the most complex situation you're probably going to run into uh, in this home. And I'll explain that a little bit more in detail. But we actually picked the most difficult way to accomplish removing this wall uh, in our video a little later on. But this is, uh, situation is a simple rafter. I mean, we have a, a rafter uh, on the roof side and a ceiling rafter carrying the ceiling and we are actually in this video going to interrupt this ceiling this 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 member sever it and we're going to place a beam flush in there uh, so this kind of fashion here and so that the ceiling between when we're done taking this wall out is flat between the two rooms and we've got a before and after uh, picture in here uh, that'll get you excited. It's, you know, your current situation likely, something similar to it, and what, what it could look like uh, after these walls are, are taken out. Again, uh, almost always on these simple, smaller homes, this can be done. It's just how much work's going to have to be uh, executed. As a truss configuration, we started seeing pretty common in the 60s, 70s, and some in the 50s, depending on your geographic area, but trusses come in a lot of different configurations. These are just examples, but basically a truss is an exercise, an engineering exercise of minimizing the amount of lumber to support the same load as a rafter system. We do have a certain load on the top cord. We want to take care, make sure we're taking care of snow loads in areas. Uh, roof load, the shingles themselves, etc. So we have a load that we anticipate on the top of the roof. And again, it's geographical. There's a lot higher in our snow regions than in the south. It's, it's generally defined by your building departments. Your local engineer will know what that is. The bottom cord is your ceiling. That load is normally approximately the same uh, somewhere between 10 pounds and 15 pounds per square foot of ceiling is estimated to be applied to that bottom cord of that truss. Now here's the question. 
If there's a center wall, let's go down to this one. If there's a center wall here, can I remove it? Can I remove that wall? Most of these trusses, you know, in that category between less than 30 feet rely on the outside walls for support. Occasionally, we can tell the truss manufacturers that we are giving them a support in the middle of the truss or somewhere else in the truss. And the only way to understand that is really getting your engineer up there and looking at that configuration. So uh, normally a truss can have that middle wall removed in these short spans, but always have a check with your local engineer about they're going to hear her are going to go up there and check out that configuration. This is actually configured where there's likely actually the trust company relied on some support of that wall. So, but let's assume it's a W truss, think truss up here, that wall's in the middle. We know that that truss, because the way it's configured, uh, does not need that center support. So that center support can come out pretty cleanly. Now, uh, there's a, there is a caveat to that. Um, an older home, when it has that center support, it will get used to that support. And when you remove it, it can reconfigure the sag in the truss and that can cause ceiling cracks to occur. That doesn't mean the truss is structurally unstable, can't carry a load, what it means is it got used to that support and it's, and it's bowed to that support. Remove it, pretty good chance you're gonna get cracks. So we often, in our office, put a, a basically a ghost support in the attic. We call it, we call it a strong back, but essentially it ghosts that wall that you removed so we, we, can, we can maintain that old shape and we don't change it and we minimize that drywall cracking issue. So. Um, that's, that's one thing we want to pay attention to. If you're really, really concerned or you care about ceiling cracks, talk to your engineer about some kind of strong back or stiffener in that truss um, when you remove that wall. Okay, why do we have triangular shapes um, uh, to our roof structures is essentially, if we don't, here I'm gonna remove this bottom cord to see what happens and this is a brief description of do not cut your trusses, do not modify things without. Um, what happens is that as you push down, if there isn't a triangular shape, look what happens to the outside walls. As you have a snow load or crews on the roof re-roofing, that load will actually have that characteristic. So we gotta we gotta create some kind of triangular shape so that that load stays just vertical. Okay, so we, a um, uh, little bit more about those trusses. You can modify trusses. Uh, we can modify them uh, engineering-wise. So I want to say you can't modify them. You can modify them, uh, but make sure there's an engineer involved and giving you guidance on how to do that. Uh, we do modify trusses all the time. Um, okay, so we're on today's video. Um, again, if you can revisit that before and after and get excited about this, this is a, again a traditional post-World War II, 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, that simple re rectangular home, uh, 24, 30 feet wide, got rafter system. Uh, that wall's now gone. Um, and the question is, um, we're gonna, in this video, we're actually gonna sever this so the, that we don't have this beam. Because they're typically lower, lower ceiling heights, eight foot common, and then we got this beam below. A lot of folks don't like that scenario where they, the, the, the wall's gone, but we still have this drop beam. And actually in the finished video, you'll see that this is a drop beam in that, in that photograph. Still looks great, but folks often ask the question, how can I get it? where that beam is hidden, that means we're severing this thing. Now, if we sever this, what I want, want to make sure that um, in the video, uh, we don't quite show it in the video, but you'll see that installation of these beams going in. 
uh, in the video and we sever this triangle. So we've really cut this triangle. Now we are right back to that same problem. Where's our triangular effect? Uh, what we do is we hang her, what we're, we're gonna do is hang her the ceiling joists to the beam and then we put a, a metal strap on the bottom and top to re-establish the tension. So if you can imagine, again, we're going to take this off. This bottom cord is mainly in tension, other than it's got a ceiling load, but mainly it's in tension, again, preventing what? The spreading of those walls. So we're going to put that back. This is in tension. If you sever this, you've got to re-establish that tension. Um, and that's, that's basically the principles of what we're up to. I'm going to show you, um, again, 90% of these homes, the walls can come out. Uh, often they're load-bearing, they're can't, they're can't, they may be carrying the ceiling only, ceiling load only. Uh, these can not overlap. Ceiling joists that may not go that 24 feet, that's pretty long for that old lumber. Um, so it's often just lapped on that wall. Um, so we do, we do need to, that wall is likely carrying uh, in a rafter situation, the ceiling rafter is likely being carried by that wall that you want to remove. So we got to reestablish that support.